Hello everyone. I'm Shiba Allard. I'm a hematologist. Uh, I'm a consultant in hematology and transfusion medicine rather. And today I'm in, co in conversation with Lance Sandel uh, from the Royal College of Pathologists and Henry Wood, who's a trainee. And just to mention, I'm also a clinical director for publications and engagement for the Royal College of Pathologists. So firstly, Lance, do you just want to say a few more words about yourself and your role? Okay, thanks. Um, I'm Lance Sandel. I'm um, registrar at the Royal College of Pathologists. Um, prior to that, I was vice president 2014 to 17. Um, I'm an ex-chemical pathologist, um, having retired a couple of years ago, but I'm still vaccinating, so I'm still on the books of the NHS uh, and still very much engaged with, uh, with, with what's going on. Fabulous. And Henry? Uh, I'm Henry. I'm a uh, haematology trainee in South London, based at King's College Hospital. Uh, currently, I'm out of programme for research, um, doing a PhD, but I'll be back soon at ST7. Um, also the BSH Vice Chair for the Education Committee. Fabulous. I'm really looking forward to this conversation. So Lance, can you start off by just giving us a brief background to what are the Royal Colleges of Pathologists' key aims and core activities? Okay. Uh, well, this is our Diamond Jubilee year. Um, we've been, we've been uh, going for 60 years this year, since 1962. Um, Big ticket items over the last couple of years is that we moved premises a couple of years ago um, to uh, the East End from central London, um, which had its own challenges. Uh, just after we'd done that and changed presidents, uh, we had a pandemic. So we've hardly seen the inside of the premises for the last two years, although we're back uh, in harness now. Um, the main things that we do, what I, what I consider to be uh, the core items, are uh, learning um, ongoing education. Uh, and after that comes um, professional standards and uh, public engagement. Uh, they're all, they all vary in importance depending on, on the topic and the time. Um, but certainly uh, the thing that sets us apart from other organisations, learned organisations, is that we, um, we're involved in learning and we set exams. That's the crucial thing. Um, professionalism clearly is an important part of what we do in terms of, particularly in terms of uh, career grade. Um, we achieve this uh, by quality improvement, patient safety and best practice and we have a team that deals with that. Um, the college also strives to ensure that the contribution of pathology to patient pathways remains relevant and recognised. So we have considerable lay involvement at all levels within the organisation as well, both from the ordinary committees up to trustee board which is chaired by a lay chair. Um, Work on communications, public engagement, which you know only too well because it's your sphere, uh, ensures that the college remains relevant to, uh, to public perception. Um, engagement not only uh, with the public, but also with government as well. And when, when, when lay people ask me, well, what do you actually do? And you try and explain to them. And then you go on a little bit. And if, the, if, the, if they've got a brain, they'll say, you mean it's about policy? So I said, oh, yes, I suppose so. And in fact, that agenda doesn't change from one year to the next. And we're, we're continually trying to refine um, government's approach to us and our approach to governments as well. That's great, thank you. So which specialties does the, co the college actually support, the Royal College of Pathologists, and how does haematology fit in here? Okay, so we've got at least 17 specialties. Uh, it's not just in medicine, we've got vets and we've got dentists as well. Um, and in some respects they come to us because it's the only organisation they can go to in terms of professional standards. But the vast majority of our work is concerned with uh, the 17 um, medical specialties. Within those specialties uh, we have not only medically qualified doctors but we have um, clinical scientists who've, who've come through the scientific route um, and, and also um, some IBMS type people as well who've come through a different route uh, and that's, that's a newer departure for us. We're not alone as a college in having that because public health physicians are not all medically qualified. Uh, psychiatrists work in a, a, an environment which is as a mixture of clinical scientists as well as medically qualified people. So. Um, we're not, we, we may have broken the ground for it, but it's not, uh, it's, we're, not, we're not on our own with it. Um, in terms of um, trainee development, um, this will differ, and this is getting more towards the discussion we're going to, I'm sure, we're heading towards. This will differ depending on which specialty you're in. So traditionally, um, haematology, for instance, was, was, was an offshoot of general medicine. 
and we're going back to the foundation of the college and the, and the, and, and the history of it. I don't want to go into too much detail, um, but certainly there are, there are some specialties where um, the, the, uh, the trainee element has been very much married to the Royal College of Physicians. Okay. Uh, and that is the case for immunology and particularly for haematology. Um, and in terms of the structure of the college, we've got committees um, that deal with uh, the interests of haematologists and immunologists, which are shared with the Royal College of Physicians. And we, we alternate between the hosting of those committees. So three or four years, they're hosted by one college and then the other college, and the chairs rotate. And there are different issues depending on which okay. discipline you're considering, um, because the RCP will control the curriculum mm -hmm. uh, and it, the relationship with the GMC, which we, you know is, is all crystallised over the last few years. So the GMC look at the curriculum, both undergraduate and postgraduate, um, and so we need to relate to, we need to have a, a mechanism for relating to the GMC, and that's through the RCP in terms of trainees. Um, what else do we need to say? That's probably enough. Yeah. I mean, we, yeah. we, we, run, we run engagement events for trainees, um, certainly most of the specialties uh, for, mm -hmm. um, for uh, to, to, to ensure they're in touch with the college. Um, there are trainees, trainee representation on the intercollegiate committees Absolutely. And, and on the transfusion committee. I've forgotten about that because yeah. haematology has two arms, transfusion, I'm sure you know, because it's yours. And... Um, uh, and general haematology. Yeah. And um, the transfusion has its own standing advisory committee within the college. Absolutely. Whereas haematology, it's a joint committee with the RCP. Okay. So there's a slight difference in structure, although there is still trainee representation within them. Okay. So, Lance, I think it's probably helpful just to summarise that the Co College of Pathologists supports 17 pathology specialties. And it's worth just emphasising that haematology is one of the largest, I think yeah. with the second yeah. largest specialty. And there are various structures in place, the Intercollegiate Committee for Haematology, and as you said, the Specialist Advisory Committee for Transfusion. And indeed, there are trainee representatives. And, you know, we've started to allude to this already, haven't we, that in, in relation to supporting haematology specialist training, it's the Royal College of Physicians, the Joint Royal College Training Board, Physicians Training Board, which administers the curriculum, but the College of Pathologists manages the exams. And let's not also forget, you've mentioned this already, in addition to um, the clinical uh, training and exams, the, co the College of Pathologists has a really important role in supporting the consultant clinical scientist role in transfusion science and many allied specialties. Um, this is in haematology and transfusion science. And, you know, we've got some fabulous trainees coming down that pathway who are going to be a real great asset to the specialty in the future. And, you know, that's something we will need to be focusing on. So, Henry, over to you. So, as haematologists, we're, of course... We have this dual role, we're physicians, but we're also pathologists. And one could actually argue that this dual nature of our expertise, being clinicians and laboratory scientists, is a real attraction. That's certainly what attracted me to the haematology specialty. But that has its challenges. You're allied to two colleges, the Royal Phil College of Physicians and the Royal College of Pathologists. I'd love to hear your views about that. Thanks. I mean, I definitely agree to begin with that um, the combination of the pathology and the clinical side of things is definitely what uh, attracted me to haematology as well. Um, but in terms of the colleges, I think um, that as a, from the point of view of a haematology trainee and from what I've heard from many of my colleagues, um, we don't really feel a sense of belonging to either college. You know, we've fallen between two stools and, and sort of maybe missed out a bit. Um, just to say, so we kind of view, I think, the RCP clearly, we understand that they provide our curriculum, our e-portfolio, which we have to have, that's vital for our training. But um, I think we maybe interact with them less than when we were sort of core medical trainees or internal medicine trainees now. Um, but the RCPath, our essential interaction with them is, is the exam. So the first time you ever really engage with the RCPath is when you go on the website and you're looking for the bit where you can register for the part one exam. Um, so, um, so I think, yeah, we don't, we don't feel a great deal of connection to it. And I think um, that's reflected by the fact that I don't think many people are members of the um, RCPath. Um, it's probably really just the people who've completed part two and want to use the FRCPath postnomials. Um, and I think the problem with that is then that you don't reach all of the haematology trainees, so they don't actually know what you're offering them, and also they don't get things like the bulletin, so they, they're kind of missing those communications. So there may be things that you are trying to offer and the trainees that they aren't, aren't, don't know about. Um, 
and I think generally the, the kind of view is that this is the RC path is for when you become a consultant, but not so much when you're a trainee, unless you're doing the exam. Thank you. That is a really important mes message, Henry, and we've got to take that on board. So clearly what I'm hearing is we need much more interaction between trainees and College of Physicians and indeed the College of Pathologists and BSH together you know, this is the start of an important dialogue. So, of course, we have had some discussions with the Royal College of Physicians, but they're not represented today. We'll be carrying on that discussion. But since we do have the Royal College of Pathologists yeah. captive, <laughs> you know, tell us what more could the College of Pathologists be doing for trainees? What can we tangibly take forward? So I think the key, the real strong message is um, engagement. So I think um, I noticed when I went on the website that for some other pathology specialties that people are registered. So I'm not sure what that means relative to being a member um, in terms of fees and things, obviously, because we have to pay lots of professional bodies. Um, but there was also a, a new trainee welcome day. And I think that could be a good way of just making that first link when you start as a haematology trainee and um, maybe starting to have that communication. And I think it could be a good collaboration with the BSH because the BSH started a number of years ago doing an ST3 induction day and that's had huge take up. It's very popular, you know, someone shows you how to use a microscope or this sorts of things, you feel slightly less afraid of the fact that you're going to be on core. Um, so I think that might be a good, you know, good place to start because then you establish the, the kind of vital link. The thing that, that if you ever mention the RC path to a haematology trainee is always going to be about the exam. So, you know, so anything that can make it less stressful um, in terms of preparing for or taking the exam will always be something that people will ask for. Um, the, the other thing that might, might help a bit is I think find that from a trainee perspective, when you go on the sort of website, um, it's a little bit tricky to kind of find your place and, and find you know, the content that's meant for you. Um, so that's, the, that's another thing, but, but really just that, that process of engagement. And I think the RC path probably has a lot to offer because you have this you know, body of, of, of consultants and, and, other, and also scientists as well, who could clearly offer lots of advice to trainees. So just the kind of networking, the, the other things, because there are lots of my colleagues who they come towards the end of haematology training and they say, I don't know what I want to do next. I don't know whether I want to work in a you know, centre, you know, hospital in London, or if you're in London or you know, another university hospital, or if I want to work in a DGH, I don't know which specialty to do. But you've got all of these, these consultants who could potentially offer them you know, more maybe tailored advice on those things. And uh, so, so that would be quite useful to us. Um, I think, as you mentioned, the Intercollegiate Committee um, on Haematology and the Trainees Advisory Committee, it's good they have trainee representation, but I think it may be also another opportunity to engage people more because if you have an HEE deanery sort of training rep, what they often will do is they'll ask you if you want them to communicate anything to the, to the HEE when they go to meet them, and then afterwards they'll tell you what they spoke about. And so that, replicating that, I mean, I know the scale's a bit bigger because it's a whole country, but, but you know, it could be a start as well to try and, try and get us a bit more involved. Um, and just in terms of thinking about, um, I think the RC Path Summer School, for example, which um, I've been involved in, is fantastic at engaging medical students, a really good uh, thing. And I think it would be good because then there's a kind of, it sort of stops, there's a bit in between where we want to encourage, you know, the best people to become haematology trainees. So to still offer that sort of thing to foundation trainees and, and, and internal medicine trainees. And in fact, you could probably use haematology registrars to deliver such a, a kind of program. Absolutely. Fabulous. Thank you, Henry. Great suggestions, and we'll certainly take some of those forward. So, Lance, back to you. I mean, we've talked uh, about your education training, we've talked about professionalism, but the college has a huge public engagement programme, you know, which is absolutely fabulous. And looking forward to the college's 60th anniversary, can you just tell us a little bit as to how the college will be uh, celebrating the 60th anniversary, and how can we all get involved? Okay. Um, well, this has been some uh, time in the planning, uh, mm -hmm. as you know, and uh, uh, Sarah, Professor Sarah Coupland, who's an ophthalmic histopathologist in Liverpool, uh, has been the vice president with uh, responsibility for dealing with this. Um, and we, we've met at seemingly um, very, very frequent intervals. It seems like every few weeks, although it's tailed off a bit now because the, the year is now in progress. So we've got a, um, a large number of events uh, to commemorate the, uh, the 60th anniversary of the college. And, and as much as you might feel that it's, a PR exercise, perhaps we do need to do a PR exercise and to use these events to show the public what we do and the people who are involved. The interesting one, um, one of the events has been the, the, the bike ride from Land's End to John O'Groats, oh, I think it's John O'Groats to Land's End actually, um, and we're actually virtually at the halfway point uh, where we're sat, although it's going to take place in a few months time. Um, 
quite a lot of people from other colleges and other, prof other parts of medicine expressed an interest in doing that, which is very nice because one of the issues we have and one of the issues you have as a haematologist, um, particularly in the teaching hospital, is the way you're perceived by your other colleagues. Not so much within pathology, where, which, which would be your natural home, as I would find it, but within um, clinical internal medicine. Um, and some of this is to do with history, uh, some of this to do with, with you know, perception of people who work in, uh, doctors who work in laboratories and clinicians who work in laboratories as opposed to people who work on the wards. Uh, the fact is that haematologists work on the wards as well. Um, and uh, the flavour of that is different from EGH, just to get back to your point, uh, compared to teaching hospitals. And it depends what, whether you want to be um, king of both castles, which you are on the DGH, or whether you want to be part of a, a, a larger... Um, piece of clinical machinery which is what you what the atmosphere is like in a large teaching hospital where there'll be a large clinical haematology department possibly separate from the laboratory as it was at Manchester Royal Infirmary for a long time and the clinic clin heme is different from laboratory haematology um, although same clinicians are involved in each two different systems mm -hmm. so um, certainly having other people involved in the anniversary events will help with that with the, with the perception um, We've, um, we've organised an open day at Ailey Street um, later in the year, in, in June, um, at which Professor Sir Jonathan Van Tam is going to speak, and he's a big plus. Um, uh, unfortunately, I don't think the Queen's going to be with us because um, she restricts her activities these days for reasons which you all know. Uh, but she's our patron and remains our patron. Um, so we're very cognizant of that and, and promoting that. Uh, National Pathology Week, uh, which... Um, uh, with which I'm not as close to as I used to be, but in, in the days when I was vice president, I was doing events with schools. Um, people are fascinated by it, children are fascinated by it. Uh, and you'll find that um, once they get beyond a certain age, they'll ask you questions which you do not anticipate. And it's always a challenge to talk to um, s students at schools and in medical schools mm -hmm. who ask you questions you do not anticipate. Yes. And that's very challenging and it enables you to explain what you do and why. So Lance, if I could perhaps reassure yeah. you and everybody, certainly as part of the Open Day, we're going to be having um, all our different specialties involved in haematology, that it'll be great. Yeah. And we will indeed be inv inviting schools. Yeah. So, and we'll have very much, so much interactive events. And certainly I think our haematology colleagues, both consultants and trainees, have helped with past events. So that sort of interactive display with schools is going to be absolutely fantastic. Yeah. I mean, one of the things, the, one of the problems we have as, uh, as laboratory people is that we're seen, uh, you know, when you ask somebody or tell somebody, what do you do? Oh, I'm a pathologist. Oh, it's not all about dead people. And it's, 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 it's just um, a mantra that's been repeated over the years. And in fact, because it, it makes good television, as we've seen from one program to the next. Um, nobody wants to really hear about microbiology or even hematology. Well, hematology can be glamorous when it's leukemias and things. Uh, but otherwise, uh, pathology is about post-mortems, which it isn't. That's a tiny element of what we do. Yes. Uh, and um, we supply information to between 70 and 85% of all diagnoses. And we need to get out there and trumpet that. So, you know, we'll, we'll be talking about the art of pathology, which um, a competition open to adults and children. Um, the theme is pathology, past, present and future. And there's lots of this. I yes. mean, we just had the, yes. the Wilkinson, Data Wilkinson lecture and, and, and that covered... Uh, that was in memory of, of people who contributed to hemolytic anemia, B12, um, leukemia, uh, the use of mustard gas in, in, uh, in, in the treatment of leukemia. So it's a, a huge uh, history of pathology stretching back 100 years nearly. Um, we've got other competitions, portrait competition. Um, we've got the Paola Domizio undergraduate essay prize that she was a uh, previous registrar of the college who sadly passed away a few years ago uh, and that's in her memory um, and we've got grants for public engagement uh, and we've also got uh, sort of a jubilee versions of the college bulletin uh, which in which people uh, will talk about their specialty and, and what they're doing for it and how they're pushing things. So just to um, expand a little bit more on the bulletin, mm. the bulletin is the quarterly publication and Henry I take your point that um, haematology trainees may not be that much aware of it but we've tried really hard to have quite a lot of haematology con content. So the Diamond Jubilee edition in January we had um, lots of profiles, Cheng Hok To was profiled and in fact the forthcoming July bulletin we've got haematology trainees, researchers so there is quite a lot in 
in the bulletin. I would say so, but you know, I would love um, hematologists and trainees to do have a look at that as well. Um, and in terms of um, wider engagement, as Lance, you've highlighted, we've got um, essay competitions for uh, undergraduates, foundation trainees, and Henry, you've alluded already to some of the you know, wider engagement, trying to get people uh, you know, attracted to uh, the, the specialty is really important, and this is where trainees and our colleagues could be helping us greatly. Uh, the other thing that I've just got to mention, which I, th I think has been great fun, is um, we've got a college book club. So that's been, we've, we've had some amazing sort of involvement um, and um, one particular book club where we had a, a larger haematology panel is called Nine Pines about the history of blood transfusion and some of the underbelly, for example, of uh, plasma collection. And that is now in is recorded and available. And so do have a look at that as well. So we'll be having, and, and our trainees review all sorts of fantastic books for the bulletin. So Professor Barbara Bain has a new book and we'll certainly be having a haematology trainee, for example, review that. So there are lots and lots of ways of getting involved with sort of the wider public engagement program and particularly within the Diamond Jubilee year. So that will be really fabulous going forward. Uh, Don't forget the healer cell lady as well. We had the family involved in that book club. Yes. Um, the life of Henry. The, yeah, the life of Henrietta Lacks. That was a fabulous. That was book that club. was that was absolutely that was yeah. that was spellbinding. That. That is, and again, it's recorded. All the book clubs are recorded, so that, that that's absolutely fantastic. Um, okay, great. So Henry, just you know, just some. I think this has been a great dialogue. Clearly, going forward. I think the College of Pathologists plays a, a really important role in, in training of hematologists and supporting hematologists. The College of Physicians does as well. A three-way dialogue between the two colleges and the British Society of Hematology is clearly really important. And we'll try and take forward some tangible points as to how we actually take this forward. Any final sort of thoughts and comments from you whilst we have Lance captive? What would you like Lance to take back <laughs> To the president and the council, you know, how, how do we make a difference going forward? Well, I think, um, as you've said, that just even having this discussion is a good, good start because I think the really key thing is to try to engage haematology trainees, raise awareness because that's the real, you know, you can't support anyone or offer any support or in, until they know about it. Um, so I think, and I, th I really do think that some sort of inductory day, um, people, when they start their training, they really want to, you know, be welcomed into the specialty um, would be good. Um, I think some collaboration with the BSH always makes sense just because we're very familiar with the BSH and they have a big offering. So, so you obviously don't want to replicate things or reinvent the wheel, but it's a good way to reach people as well. Um, always people will be um, keen for, for more support with the exam, knowing what to do, how to, <laughs> how to revise for it. Um, and, um, but yeah, I think this having this, this dialogue is the main, the, the kind of key thing to start. And the other point that I thought is that there's a lot that the college could gain from having haematology trainees involved. So it's not just, you know, what can haematology trainees get from the RC path, it's what can the RC path get from haematology trainees. Absolutely. Lance, any yeah, final words Yeah, just a couple, couple of points. Um, clearly, you know, we'd like, we need more engagement with haematology trainees. That we need to, we need to recognise the, the, the bureaucracy that's in place that's, that's in some respects proving to be a bit of a barrier to that without going into too much detail. And it's the interrelationship between the bodies involved. Um, but we can work on that because we all know each other. Um, I won't say any more about that because it's, it's something we, we need to work on. At consultant level, you know, I'd like to think that the college could encourage more consultant level people to, become, to step forward, as Shuba has done. I mean, it's great having a variety of people involved. They all bring something different to the table. You know, in the, in the past, uh, you know, we've had vice presidents who've been haematologists, presidents who've been haematologists, and they, they provide something a bit extra. Um, we've been having a look at all the college bylaws and things to make sure we do get an appropriate mix of people from one top team to the next. And that's actually quite important because it all filters down to other people who want to become involved as well. So um, it's not just the trainees we need to engage, it's everybody else within haematology as well. Uh, across, I mean, across the board, but particularly yeah. haematology because that's where we are at the moment. And certainly we've had some amazing presidents of the College of Pathologists, which have been haematologists. And going forward, a little plug, um, I'll be com completing my clinical director and publication role 
uh, it'll be within the next six months. It'll be great to have other haematologists come forward. So uh, if you're interested in the role, do come forward. Yes. And yes. Um, there's, and pre it, there's precedent there because your predecessor was a haematologist. Absolutely. Well. And she was just <laughs> as fantastic as you've been. Oh, bless you, Lance. <laughs> that seems like a really positive note that we should indeed stop. Lance, thank you so much. That's been well, great. Henry, thank you. And thank you to both of you thinking so carefully about the questions and really coming forward with some tangible ideas. And I really hope that we will be able to build on this. This is really just the, the start of some really important dialogues. Thanks. Thank you.